Hey there, everybody. Hey, how's it going? Welcome. Welcome. I'm Todd Nock, professional comic book artist. And um, usually you, you catch me doing my live streams where I'm drawing on post-it notes uh, on weekday mornings, 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. noon Eastern. Uh, today, I thought we'd do something that's a little not not post-it note related. Uh, as we're, you know, all staying home, most of us are staying home, most of us are not either at work or at school, as we're trying to keep this whole coronavirus thing to a minimum as much as possible to hopefully ride out this whole season, trying to provide some content uh, just to kind of keep spirits up, hopefully have some fun, and maybe learn something about art. Here, I'll share some of my tips and tricks. So today, I'm gonna to do a more full figure piece with uh, Rogue and Gambit on this Rogue and Gambit sketch cover. So I thought this would be kind of fun to do. We'll see how far we get. This isn't gonna be, this isn't quite what I do with the posted uh, live streams, but this is, um, I'll share some tips and tricks about hopefully I can uh, spend more time just kind of hanging out with you, maybe answering some questions um, as we go, maybe talk geek stuff, whatever, you know, just mo mainly having fun. I'll try to share tips and tricks as I go, but um, we'll just see if we can do something a little different, more something that's a little bit more of a hangout today. So let's flip the camera around and let's get to drawing. Let me just readjust the rig here. All right, and re there we go. Readjust the lighting. And we're good to go. Oh, let me readjust so I can see. What was my favorite X-Men movie? Um, I think, gosh, um, I'd probably say X-Men First Class might be my favorite of the X-Men franchise that I can recall. So I started with a, this kind of rough sketch here of, of, of Gambit and Rogue. Um, and thought, you know what, let's put that on a sketch cover. And so, so sometimes I'll do a quick small thumbnail. This is a three inch by three inch post-it note, just to kind of get an idea of where I want to place figures. And I did some erasing and figuring out and reworking Rogue and trying to make it all fit together. So, um, so this is kind of the general pose. I might make some edits as I draw here uh, on this space here. Let's see, which, which do I like more, Infinity War or Endgame? Uh, for me, I see those two movies as one full story, just in two parts. So I like them both. I think they are two halves of one whole. That's kind of the way I see those movies. So I have Gamb up here on a ledge, so I'm kind of putting the ledge he'll put uh, be standing on. Or crouching on, I should say. I'm keeping in mind where I'm going to have Rogue. So Rogue will be up over here. And then Gambit's crouched here. How's my quarantine going? So far, so good. My wife and I are staying healthy. We are maintaining that physical distancing from the general public, not each other, but from the world. So um, we, are, we are hunkered down and riding out the storm. Feel free to share my video, invite others to come watch, either the live stream or the replay. Do appreciate that support, gang. My wife is a nurse, right? <laughs> she is not a nurse, but she is very smart. She is smart enough to work in the medical profession. What else do I like to draw? Uh, mostly I'm a superhero guy. I mean, I love drawing superheroes, so I'm thankful that it is my full-time job because it is my favorite thing to draw. Superheroes slash comic books. So just real scratchy initial gesture. Oops, sorry, gang. Didn't realize the full cover wasn't on the screen there. So I just put the knee, the shin, the calf muscle right there. This thigh. A lot of layering of the and foreshortening of the body here.
Could I please draw Evolution Rogue? I gotta say, X-Men Evolution is my favorite of all the X-Men cartoons currently. Uh, but this will be a classic comic book Rogue and Gambit. I will not be drawing the Evolution versions in this illustration. You were, you were not expecting a stream until Monday. Yes, the new Post-It stream will be on Monday, but I thought let's do a hangout here today. More hanging out, not as much instruction. I will share some of my thought process as we go, but it's not heavy instruction. Let's see, if I could draw a Marvel DC crossover, what would it be? Gail Simone started up a, a Twitter thread about this earlier this week, and someone had commented on her, her thread saying they'd like to see me draw Young Justice and New Mutants, and I was totally on board for that. I'd love to draw a Young Justice New Mutants uh, crossover. That would be my, my Marvel crossover choice. Marvel DC crossover choice. So it's got a staff right there. Sorry, gang, if I miss your question or comment, a lot of my focus goes into the art here, so it's kind of hard to look over and, 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 and read. but I'll try to catch, respond to what I can catch if I have an answer. Let's see. I'm gonna readjust that thigh. Lower it a little bit. These are your two favorite characters of all time. Right on. Well, I'm glad you're able to tune in and join me today. A lot of my thought is going into putting this puzzle together, figuring out where everything goes. And is everything in the place where I want it to be before I move too far into more details. So I know it's really scratchy right now, huh? So I make sure I put things in place. Readjust this arm here a little bit. Hi from Brazil. Well, hello, Brazil. Thanks for tuning in. Where's everyone watching from? I hope everyone's staying home and staying healthy. Let's see, let's do a little work here on Rogue. Austria, Sweden, home. Good. I like hearing that. I like to hear that you're watching from home. Whoa, a lot of them coming in here. <laughs> Israel, Romania, UK. Very good. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. 
Oh, we got more. Baltimore, France, Mexico. Mars. Wow. This broadcast is going all the way up to Mars. You must have some strong Wi-Fi. Well, thank you for watching, Martians. So I'm trying to keep in mind where each element of each character is and what overlaps the other thing. At least Mars is free of coronavirus, yes? I can imagine that. Do I remember the 80s X-Men artist Paul Smith, issues 172 through 175? Um, I can't remember which issues those are exactly, like what the storyline was for those issues, but uh, Paul Smith is an amazing artist. Yes, loved his work on Uncanny X-Men, absolutely. He is legendary. All right, so I got some basic shapes in here for, for Gambit and Rogue. Air flowing here. And Gambit's trench coat. To create space for Rogue over here, I'm having like the wind kind of blowing her hair and Gambit's jacket and hair to, to the side here. Because if I had it going the other way, his jacket would cover her legs and we wouldn't get to see as much as Rogue. So I'm going that way. Maybe they're on top of a building, or at least Gambit's on top of a building because, you know, he can't fly. And we got Rogue. Just behind him. So I've put in so many scribbles, it's almost hard to, um, to see what I'm working on. So what I'm going to do is take my kneaded art gum eraser here. Kind of smush it out to reactivate it. How do I print digital pencils? Are there certain things you need? Uh, yes, I do print out my digital pencils. I open up my file in Photoshop, crop it, and... Uh, size it to the, the size I want to print it at. So I'm just going to do a little light rubbing here to kind of lighten up these, these sketch lines so I can come in with a little tighter detail before moving to inks. So it just helps keep things from getting too messy. So that's a kneaded art gum eraser. And uh, so yeah, I'll open up the page in uh, Photoshop. And then uh, after I've sized it and cropped it the way I need it to be, 
to fit on the artboard. I will convert the, the black lines to the light blue, the non-reproduction photo, non-photo blue, and then print that out on my 11 by 17 artboard on my Epson Artisan printer. So for me, having Photoshop and um, a, a printer that can print at 11 by 17 are two of the things that I need. What program should you use for digital art? Um, some use Photoshop, some use Procreate. I use Clip Studio Paint. It's a, a um, program that's uh, used to be called Manga Studio or Manga Studio. And um, it's a great program for drawing comic books. It's very, very built for drawing comics. So I would, I would, that, that's, that's the one I use. So it all, I guess, depends on the type of artwork you want to do. I think if you want to do some really serious illustration type stuff, I hear Procreate might be the way to go. You can see some of my Clip Studio Paint video, video tutorials here on, on my channel. I think I have a dedicated playlist for those. I only have a, like three or four of those videos. But I do plan to do more. So I want to try to pencil my faces as a little tighter than, than what I've initially sketched out here to make sure everything fits together the way I want. We can push in a little closer here so you can see the details as I pencil the face. I don't have a digital art play playlist yet? Okay, I need to create that playlist then. My apologies, I thought I had, but apparently I have not. Keeping in mind the curvature of his leg here for the banded metal boots.
Let's see. You know I've done this before, but can I uh, explain again how to get a job as a comic book artist? Um, yeah, we can kind of walk through that here. Don't mind sharing that again. Um, I'm sure there are a lot of young artists who may have miss missed that in previous videos, so this will be new information for them. Uh, the main thing is comic books are about storytelling. It's that panel-to-panel -panel storytelling. So that's the first thing you need to start working on is it's not just being able to draw the character or a cool shot of the character, but also being able to do the sequential art, that panel-to-panel -panel storytelling, like on the pages, like if we open this comic book up, we have all these panels that, that lead the reader through the, through the page and tells the story. That's, that's where the rubber meets the road. So, number one, start working on that, along with working on your figure work, your anatomy, your perspective, your backgrounds. You also want to be working on your storytelling and your pacing and your mood. Uh, this is all stuff that uh, is critical for a comic book. So, I say start drawing pages because if you're drawing pages, then you're working on your figure work. You're working on your anatomy. You're working on your foreshortening. You're working on your backgrounds and perspective all at the same time. It's a, it's a, it's a full body workout if you're working on comic book pages. Um, you're going to be hitting all the key areas that you need to get, you know, good at. So, um, and the sooner you can start doing that, the better. Now, once you start doing your pages, start getting your, your, your work ready to take to comic book conventions. Show your samples to editors at comic book conventions. I know many publishers have editors at the conventions, especially the larger ones. So San Diego, New York, Chicago, uh, Seattle. Um, they'll ha and, and probably others, um, just depending on which publishers are there. And uh, see if you can find an editor who would be willing to take a look at your portfolio. Have... Uh, Take the full-sized artwork. If you have digital, then have a good-sized tablet that they can see it on. Don't show it on your phone if you can avoid that. Bring an iPad or a, whatever tablet you're drawing on. You know, something that's at least comic book size so they can get a good look at what you are drawing. Um, it's it's going to be, be, better represent your art. But if you draw traditionally, that's awesome too. Either way is valid. Um, have that in, have those pages full-size pages in your portfolio to show. And then uh, then you can uh, also have uh, photocopies, whether digital or traditional, photocopies of your work. Smaller, you can size them down to an eight and a half by 11 photocopy packet with your name and email address on every page so that if you get a sense that the, the editor likes what you're doing or is responding favorably, you can say, well, can I leave a sample packet with you? And I'm, you know, I'm sure many of them will say, yeah, that, that'd be fine, and they'll take that from you. And you never know, that might lead to work later on down the line. Um, might not lead to anything in that moment, but go through the process again. I saw uh, one comic book editor in my early days of trying to break in. She'd come out to the Dallas conventions uh, every four to six months, and... Uh, um, because she was a native Texan, so the comic book convention allowed her to come out and see her family. And, um, or at least that was my impression I was under. Um, so I'd see her regularly, and it was like maybe the sixth time I saw her, she finally said, you know what, I see improvement, I'm willing to take a chance on you, uh, send me some sketches, and I'll do, I'll buy a, a pinup, one page pinup off of you for a book she was editing. And uh, that was my first paid published work. But it took a while to get there, and it took multiple meetings, uh, interactions with the editor to get to a place where uh, she was willing to give me a chance. So some people uh, get hired on their first try. Some people it takes us multiple tries. So um, that's okay. As long as, you know... You know, everyone's story is different. Everyone's journey is different. 
So um, that would be kind of one of the, I think one of the best ways to connect with an editor uh, is at a convention because um, you get that face-to-face -face meeting, which can really be valuable. Because if you do get hired someday, you will be actually working with the editor, you know, interacting with them. So getting to know them as a person can be very valuable. Got some cards here in his hand so he can start charging these up. I have an energy signature kind of coalescing around those cards. And the smolder. Cutting through. And that will cut over his over his leg. Who is this character? This is Gambit. He's one of the X-Men. He debuted in the early 1990s. I just want to say 1990, I think is when he debuted. Maybe late 89, 1990. That's when he came on the scene. How do I feel about Rogue and uh, Gambit getting married? You know, I think it's about time. It's about time. These lovebirds finally tied the knot. I'm cool with it. I'm cool with them getting married. Let's get this other knee going. Appreciate everyone hanging out and watching. Hopefully you're subscribed to my channel so you don't miss out on future live streams, especially when I did schedule them last minute like I did this one. This was kind of a last minute idea. It's like, let's just hang out. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and set your notifications to alert you when I schedule a live stream so you can go, oh wait, Todd's streaming? I wanna see what he's drawn today. Keeping in mind the foreshortening and the arc of the, or the angle of the legs to get that curvature of that banded metal boot. Don't want to draw lines just straight across. I want them to show the, the curvature of the leg, the musculature of the leg, the, the roundedness. Let's get this other arm going here. Let me readjust this lighting here. There we go. Hopefully that's a little bit better. How did I feel about drawing my Clone Saga story? Spider-Man The Real Clone Saga? That was, it was fun. It was great working with Tom DeFalco and uh, Howard Mackey, legendary Marvel writers. So it was, it was a lot of fun. It was really cool working with them. It was a, it was, it was a really fun project. So I gotta get his fingers bending in the right way to hold his staff. What do I think of the new Young Justice series? I dig it. 
I dig it. I'm behind in my reading. I'm like three or four issues behind, but I've enjoyed what I've read so far. It's fun to see the kids back together. I think the Bendis and the Patrick Gleason and now John Timms, they're all doing incredible work on the series, and it's a lot of fun. It's fun to see my kids back on back together again. Makes my heart happy. Let's see, where's my straight edge here? I'm gonna use this triangle here to um, get a nice clean straight line for his staff. Gonna drop in some shadow here, just some some sort of cloth rendering effect here to show the underside of his trench coat as it blows to the side. All right, those pencils I think are tight enough for Gambit for the moment. Let's see what we can do with Rogue here. So uh, people often ask what type of tool I'm using, and I try to share that at the beginning of each video. I forgot to share it here with this one. I'm using an Uni Kurotoga uh, 0.3 millimeter uh, lead mechanical pencil with HB lead. This is a very fine point lead. And uh, it's, the lead is easy, can easily break. But having a lead this, this, uh, this small, a point this fine, has taught me to get an even lighter touch to my art because boy was I breaking tons of lead when I first started using this. I still break lead all, um, on a regular basis. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, I'm not just busting every lead every time I put uh, pencil to paper. Uh, what are my thoughts on the Procreate app? Use it? Examples? Um, I do have it on my iPad. I, you know, I, I fiddle with it every now and again. Uh, I don't work with it regularly and I haven't had time to really invest time into, um, to learning more the the tricks and bells and whistles of that app to uh, get more proficient at it yet because my focus has been on so many other art projects but um, but I am trying to learn more how to utilize it I, I think it's a good app I think it's a great app actually I love the stuff I see people do with it I just haven't had the time to get to that place with my art on that app specifically right now for my digital drawing I utilize the my, my go-to is um, the, the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro. Those are the words I was looking for. The Wacom Mobile Studio Pro, and I use the um, Clip, not, not Clip, yeah, Clip Studio Paint comic book drawing app on that. And uh, that, that's, that's my go-to for my digital art at this time. I've spent more time uh, investing um, in getting comfortable and proficient with that, that tablet and that program. But I do hope to get to um, do more with the Procreate app and get better at it as soon as I get that chance.
you recommend Sketchbook Pro uh, drawing software. Uh, I'll have to look into that. Thanks for the tip. How do I keep with up with constant characters, constant look and change uh, in the comics? Um, one, I, I, I try to keep up with reading as many comics or what's going on in comics as much as possible. And depending on the project I'm working on, uh, my editors will uh, filter me the current designs of whatever character might be appearing in that comic or on that cover that I am to draw. So, so edit, ed, editorial is a really, really great help in that regard. In, in so many other regards, please don't, don't uh, misunderstand me there. Um, they, are, they are great to work with in, in every regard, uh, but that is one thing that um, they help us with. It's one, one of the smaller ways they help us with all the stuff that they do. They, they do a lot of amazing things. So I just want to make sure that those words were not misunderstood. That they're not just a, we make sure you have the right costume reference. Any chance you'll see a Wild Guard crowdfunding uh, campaign for a new issue of the comic? Uh, not any time in the n near future, but we don't know what the future might hold. Um, I have been noodling on a new Wild Guard one-shot, as I've been practicing my digital uh, art skills. Um, it's kind of been on hold while I've been working on my Gwen Stacy series. So, um, But I've got about half of that story drawn. And um, I just need to need to continue to, to work on it, but there is no rush on that deadline. So um, so who knows when we'll see that Wild Guard story. But thank you so much for reading and supporting Wild Guard. Do I also write Wild Guard? Absolutely. I created it. I write it. I draw it. It's been my my creator own project since uh, since I was in art school in the 1990s was when I came up with Wild Guard. Who would I cast to play Booster Gold in a Wild, uh, Booster Gold TV show? I am the absolute worst at casting. Like fan casting, I, I am just terrible at it. I, I don't even think in that way. So I would have, I would not even begin to know where, where to, to uh, start with that. Now I, I've heard People suggest or rumors or things like that. Like uh, I think people thought Nathan Fillion should be uh, Booster Gold, and I could totally see that. But I just don't keep up with all the the actors out there. Like who would be be best for what enough to play that game? How do I deal with artist block? Great question. I get that one pretty frequently. If you look at my frequently asked questions uh, playlist. I address that exact um, that exact question. So if you don't mind, I'll direct you to that one because you're gonna, probably going to get better information from that that uh, that frequently asked question video than what I could tell you here while while putting my brain towards drawing because that is such a, a deep and heavy subject. Um, a great subject, great question to ask. But if you don't mind, if I direct you to my frequently asked questions video playlist. That will hopefully give you some good tips. How do I ha handle drawing older characters? Uh, the same way as I handle drawing younger characters. Um, just I utilize more lines for their face because there is more age in their face. You know, more wrinkles, more time set into the face as we get older. You know, things start to, you know, Time and gravity will, will get us, you know? So just uh, incorporating that and looking at real life, looking at real life old people to see how would I, how would I translate that visually? Just some of the, 
first things that pop to mind. In response to a, a question like that. Because really drawing figures is the similar steps. It's like the 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 there's the basics, you know, you have the head, the face, the arms, the legs, the body, and then how do you how do you build off of that? Do you go young? Do you go old? It's um, and then that's where things start to diverge. Sorry, just reworking this hand here a little bit. This fist. She's ready to punch something. Maybe like a sentinel. Maybe they're looking up at a sentinel. See, I think I saw someone ask, where do I keep all my post-it note drawings? Um, I sell them. I have sold pretty much all of my post-it note drawings. A lot of them sell within minutes of me posting them. So um, if you go to the Art of Todd Knock Facebook page and go to the post-it note album section, it explains the art sale process in the description for that album. Right up there at the top when you go to that album. Let's see, am I familiar with Gambit and Rogue's X-Men kids from the X-Men The End future? No, I did not get a chance to read X-Men The End yet. I need to I need to add that to my my read list. So no, I'm not familiar with those characters. Um, unfortunately, at least not at this time. So a lot of this penciling here is still kind of sketchy and still a shorthand for me as I uh, will leave stuff open for me to render more in inks. So this is still not as tight as I would pen pencil for, um, for what I would offer if I was working with an inker, or what I've, I'd even ink for myself. I still pencil a bit tighter for when I pencil my comic book pages. But this is about as tightly as I would pencil for maybe like a, hmm, yeah, for a convention or commission sketch. because I don't want to lose too much of the energy of the line. I'm not having to worry about like storytelling or pacing. There is, this is telling a little bit of a story. Even just in this one shot, it's like, what, what are Rogue and Gambit looking at? What are they getting ready to do? And it lets the reader or the viewer um, kind of fill in the blanks. But it's not, not a sequential art storytelling. But it could be one panel of, of, of the page. So this leg is going back. Those little black straps that go around her knee. Get that center stripe going down. Red down, or not red, um, yellow. Yellow down the middle, green down the outside. So you're putting some dark sections there in the, the green section, leaving the yellow open as a lighter color, or what would be a lighter color. 
Hopefully we can get all the pencils and inks done here on this video, but I will probably will not have time to color this in this live stream. Probably come back next week to do the the colors. Her other foot going back there. Oh, thanks for the kind words, everyone. I appreciate that. Appreciate your kind words for my art. Thanks for enjoying what I do. That really means a lot. Thank you so, so much. Really like to try to get tighter on the eyes and the face. I want that to be as clear to myself as possible when going to inks. So I'll have to add some more hair there. But before I do that, let's finish off her jacket. You left my work on Nightcrawler, thank you. Will I be back to drawing X-Men? I would love to do more work with the X-Men. Um, and uh, who knows what the future holds? I do know the people in the X office. They do know my my love for the X-Men. So we'll see if maybe something works out for a project again someday. Um, right now, I'm currently working in the Spider-Man office, another fave of mine. Big Spider-Man fan as well as big X-Men fan. So I'm currently doing the Gwen Stacy series over in the Spider-Man office, um, which has been a lot of fun. It's a five-issue miniseries. First two issues are out now. If your comic shop is still open, maybe you can uh, pick up issues one and two. A lot of stores are doing mail-out orders or uh, curbside pickup orders. So contact your local comic shop to see if they're still open and support them in this coronavirus stay-at-home time. Helping out small business is going to be be critical. So you can at least get the first two issues. Let's see, I don't like how that strap, jacket strap overlaps the cuff of her glove. So we're just going to pull that down. Want to be mindful of tangents. Tangents are when... Like when two lines line up too symmetrically and, and, and become almost give the illusion of one line. Um, it's about the best way I can describe that at the moment while actually working on, on this piece. So um, you always want to be careful that the lines don't line up to where they do that. It, 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 like they just touch each other. That's... that's uh, an unappealing design aspect. You want things to overlap. So that's something I try to keep in mind. All right, let's uh, get more of that hair going and really get that 90s hair. Oh, there I went breaking the lead. For those of you who are watching earlier in the broadcast, I was talking about breaking, breaking this very fine point, point three mechanical pencil lead. And I said I still break lead every now and again and I just did. I'm gonna put in a little tail here to her headband, little straps. Kind of give it that Rambo flavor. Just gonna just double check my eyes here for Gambit. The whites of the eyes are black, and then his iris, the color part of the eye would be red. All right, let's come in here and let's start dropping in some inks. 
So I'm gonna be using my microns, my 01, 005, 08, maybe some brush pen a little bit later on. Right now, because these figures are fairly small, um, I'm gonna start with the 01. If there's a Kitty Pride book I should draw it, I would love to draw that book. Kitty Pride is one of my absolute favorite X-Men, if not my favorite X-Men. If I tried the Eon art board, Greg Capullo's raving about it. Um, I have not heard of it, so I have not tried it. But if Greg Capullo loves it, well, that's that's a good recommendation there. I love Greg Capullo's artwork. Great guy, too. Will there be any Peter Parker cameos in Gwen? Well, hopefully you've read the first two issues. I won't say any more than that. And as far as what happens in issues three through five, I can't give away spoilers. You gotta keep reading. But thank you for asking. So if you watched my post-it videos when I was addressing in both the Valkyrie and the Wonder Man videos about how I draw the hair, it's all about knowing where the full skull is first. That's why I rough in the full skull, that full circle there. And then two, creating chunky shapes, which I then break apart with some individual strands of hair. And closer we are to the base of the head, a little more and further back, the more concentrated those strands are to give a sense of shadow and depth. What's one of my favorite 80s bands? Oh, you must know, uh, 
Must be, are you aware that I'm an 80s kid? Grew up in the 80s, love the 80s. Um, gosh, one of my favorite 80s bands. Um, let's see. REM, I'd probably say REM for sure. In excess. There's an 80s band that I like. They kind of debuted in the late 80s. They're a post-punk post band called Too Much Joy. And I've been really getting into Too Much Joy of late. The band Too Much Joy. I like stuff like um, Def Leppard too. Def Leppard. Um, Aha. The Call. The Alarm. Husker Du. New Order, Erasure, Depest Mode. Yaz. What about Sandra from the 80? Uh, I don't know who Sandra is. I've not heard of Sandra. What was her big hit? Cannot place the name. What kind of music did she do? The police, yes, the police, absolutely. The Bengals, the Go Go's. Speaking of the Go Go's, Belinda Carlisle and Jade Weedlin when they went solo in the late 80s. Yeah, I really dig the 80s. Definitely one of my Pandora playlists. A couple of them, actually. Maria Magdalena was her big hit. Okay, I'll have to look that up at some point. I'll use my ellipse template here for his knee pads. Get a nice clean oval shape. Drafting tools are pretty common in comic art.
Any tips for adding depth? Um, yeah, as you can see here, I got a lot of depth going on just between these two figures. Uh, overlapping things, like how my leg overlaps the thigh, which overlaps his chest. So overlapping, foreshortening, can help create depth. And then here in inking, thicker grounds, or thicker grounds, <laughs> thicker lines, can, can uh, move your, your, the object you're inking to the foreground, where thinner lines move to the background. And then you vary the lines for everything in between. So, um, now I'm not saying that every line for what's in the foreground has to be thick, but the main, the main section, like the knee pad, the leg would be a thick outline, then the stuff inside could have thinner lines for details. So it's kind of, uh, a dance between varying that line weight to create uh, distance, depth, light, and shadow. Definitely things to think about. How to give the feeling of uh, metal uh, when drawing in the line art. Um, yeah, we will be addressing that here when I d draw his metal staff, when I put more details into his uh, staff and on his, his um, shin uh, knee pads and his boots, they are of uh, banded metal like Iron Man. And you can see here reflecting the light. Metal, if it's kind of like a shiny chrome metal, is going to have is going to reflect the world around us. So we have this here creating, uh, it's reflecting the horizon and then fading down to showing kind of the earth below and the sky above. It's kind of a shorthand for that. What superhero is easy to draw? Uh, um, great question. What superhero is easy to draw? You know, I think, you know, if the, the less complicated the design, the easier it is to draw. So if you look at a character that has a very complicated design, that's gonna be the more difficult character to draw, unless that's a character you draw all the time. Like I thought Spider-Man would be so difficult to draw because of all those webs on his costume. But having since learned the web pattern, I find Spider-Man to be quite easy to draw now because I'm used to drawing him, having drawn him so much over these past many, many years. So, um, so really it's, it's several different factors. complication of design, but then that's not the sole determination. It's also how proficient is one at drawing that one character. So 
So now I'm using the 0, 0, 5 micron for the finer details of his face. Sorry, putting a lot of focus here on the face for the moment. Sorry if I'm missing any uh, comments or questions. Am I excited to see Taskmaster on the big screen? Yeah, that'll be cool. It's fun to see him be introduced into the uh, Marvel U. Marvel Cinematic Universe, I should say. What do I think of Alpha Flight? I think they're awesome. I think they are Canada's premier superhero team in the Marvel Universe. Appreciate everyone hanging out with me here this day. I hope you're doing well. Am I drawing these from memory or is or did I pull up reference? I'm drawing this from memory. I'm drawing them completely from memory right now. Sometimes if I can't remember a detail, I will Google the character, pull up a little reference material if if I'm drawing a character that I can't remember their their costume design or details. But Gambit and Rogue, especially classic Gambit and Rogue, like the 90s era costumes. I have seen these or drawn these enough times 
to feel I can get the the details details down from from memory. Name the coolest character I had to draw. Uh, there are so many cool characters. I don't believe there is one coolest. For my, for my, for my, my opinion, for my experience. But you know, being having worked so much with uh, Spider-Man, to be considered one of the Spider-Man artists is a huge honor to have done that much Spider-Man work. That people think of when they think of my art, they think of me as a Spidey artist, is is um, a real honor and something I'm uh, uh, an honor I, I I take I take seriously and, and and proudly because I grew up a Spider-Man fan from age about three or four. I've been a, a, a Spider-Man fan, so I love to be. Um, associated with that character. So I'd say that's a pretty cool character. That I've gotten to draw and draw a lot of. How could I possibly draw Invisible Woman? You didn't see her there in the background? She's right there. She is probably the easiest character to draw. Absolutely. Invisible Woman. You always like Dark Hawk. Dark Hawk, yes. I remember when he first came on the scene back in the 1990s. Uh, drawn by, uh, I think, Mike Manley was the original artist of Dark Hawk. We need to see you on a Spider-Man X-Men team-up series. I would love... A Spider-Man X-Men team-up series. Oh my gosh. That'd be hitting on my two biggest Marvel fandoms in one project. I'd get to draw all my favorite characters. Oh my goodness. That would be a lot of fun. That would be a very, very fun book to do. You failed at drawing Invisible Woman. Keep practicing. Keep practicing. You'll get there. Any suggestions on cleaning your Statler Mars eraser? Uh, yeah, sometimes I'll clean my eraser by just taking a blank sheet of uh, paper or board and then just kind of erasing on it. It's where it kind of rubs the gray off of the eraser so that it, it will erase more cleanly. Um, that's that's a trick that I, 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 I do to um, clean off all that, the graphite that's built up on that eraser just to to erase over a blank sheet of board and just kind of rub out all of that, the unnecessary um, graphite that has accumulated. And when you see the eraser look more white and less gray, then you've got it to a, a better place.
So we're moving on to the legs, people. It's leg day. Get these legs in here. Never skip leg day. That's right. That's right. Ultimate Ninja Sensei. Never skip leg day. Back to the ellipse template. Different shaped ellipses for these for this changed angle. A little horizon reflection through there to convey that metal aspect. Of the, the knee pad. Do I have any tips for drawing and coloring Gambit's eyes? Uh, yeah, hopefully you saw uh, saw me ink his eyes earlier. If not, you can catch on the replay and I'll be addressing coloring when we get to the coloring uh, live stream. I will not be doing the colors in this live stream. That would be too long um, of a live stream, so I will not be able to do colors in this one. Hopefully we can do the colors uh, next weekend. So be sure to tune in for that. If you subscribe to my channel, make sure you set the um, notifications to alert you when I schedule that next live stream so you don't miss out. So you can watch it live with me as I draw live for everybody. Who are my top three favorite X-Men characters to draw? Um, well, I'd say Colossus is way up there because his, uh, his steel texture of his body is really fun to draw. Nightcrawler, because I get to draw that Bamf effect, his teleporting effect, and he's got, you know, that cool tail to work as a graphic element. Um, he's, a, he's a very... Very Spider-Man-like in his, his movements. Very acrobatic. So that's a cool aspect of him. And then... Lastly, Kitty Pride, just because she's currently my favorite X-Men character. There's just something fun about drawing your favorites. Because of the fandom connection to the character. Okay, let's see, I'm trying to catch a question there. I'm not quite sure, quite sure what you mean. Um, someone was asking about why I drew Gambit's arm the way I did. Um, it's just an uh, artistic choice. 
just to to have him holding the the cards down um, that just yeah just kind of the vibe I was feeling and I like the kind of the the crisscross element of it all the leg overlapping to the arm coming down and over and so just kind of I dug the vibe back to the zero eight micron for some of these uh, bigger chunkier black areas probably come in with a brush pen to fill in more of this black they'll get the job done in a bit easier way Ever been asked to do a, a, the movie version of a character for, for, for a commission? Uh, I have, occasionally. I don't really do the movie versions for conventions because the movie versions are far more detailed and take up so much more time that it can eat up too much of the time of the weekend to where I can get fewer commissions done. It's not to say I will never do um, the film versions as uh, convention commissions. It's just I'm a little more hesitant depending on the design. So um, I, tr I want to try to, uh, um, to accommodate as many people as I can. And if a, com a character is too complicated, then I might uh, decline that character for a convention commission so I don't spend so long on, on, on that one character that it denies two or three or four other people from getting a commission because drawing MCU Iron Man took me seven hours to do or something like that. So... But yes, I have drawn drawn the movie versions of these characters, or of, of some of the characters. In fact, if you saw my comic book two-issue miniseries, uh, Spider-Man Homecoming Prelude, issues one and two, which is a, a movie adaptation, or a comic book adaptation of the movie Captain America's Civil War, which was a comic two-issue miniseries Marvel did to lead up to um, the Spider-Man Homecoming movie, I got to draw not only the characters from that movie, but scenes from that movie, Civil War. I watched that movie so much on pause, repeat, pause, repeat, fast forward, rewind, that um, because I had to draw so many scenes from that, I had to do a comic book interpretation of those scenes. It, uh, it took... It became one of the it became the Marvel movie I have seen the most just by default of having worked on the movie adaptation or the comic book adaptation of that movie. Now back to the metal here. I'm considering the shine of the the metal but also the structure of his calves and shin and how those shapes would reflect the world around him. It's almost a, it's a similar thinking as to the, the knee pad here, but for the shin bone leg bone and mus musculature and ankles. I'm considering the, the light source, the, re, the reflected light, the, ref, the shadow reflections, things like that. Have ever used screenshot captures for my covers? Uh, no, I have not. I have not done that before to draw my covers. Continuing to keep that banded metal, much like Colossus, arcing around the leg there. Helps show the shape and form of the leg. 
Got the bottom of his foot here as his front toe is, front part of his foot, his toe area is kind of overlapping, sticking out over the ledge. In fact, I'm going to need to ink that in soon. But what I want to do here real quick is I want to grab my pink marker here. I'm going to use pink here for the energy to kind of give it a color hold like we would see in the comics. So that when we go to colors, this will really look like uh, energized uh, playing cards. So using a pink micron now. He's at hearts there. He's at spades. Maybe that's the back of a card. And the back of a card here. And now to get that coalescing energy, which will bring a lot of this home in the color colors. Then we have the, the energy trail overlapping the leg and going off panel here. Put a few little flecks of sparked energy kind of coming off of the trail. Okay. So. That's all I need of that pink, at least for now. Um, where's my straight edge? I want to get the uh, the ledge inked in here. So we're just pulling right across the top there. I might add more detail to the ledge later on. Right now, let's just keep working on Gambit. Use the 08 micron to uh, draw that line. I'm just going to stick with the 08 micron here. Since we get um, more bold contours here for the outer part of his leg and foot. Keeping in mind the shape of the foot like the heel, top of the foot, etc., to create those reflected or horizon line sort of details that that trying to convey that metallic look. And then back to the zero one for cleaner detail, crisper, finer point detail for the banded metal that will wrap around the calf muscle, around the shin, around to the ankle, around the foot, going all the way down to the toe, just like that. So I'm going to fill that part in black later on. I'm going to do a fade here. The tip of or the bottom of his foot overlapping or sticking out from behind the, the ledge there. So it creates that fade because of the light source of the um, 
the charged up energy there. Now let's see, get that uh, triangle back and we're gonna drop in this, his bow staff here. A little, again, it's shiny metal, so I want to just put in one line, a little shadow line right down, right down the, not the exact center, just kind of to the side of the center. And there we've got his bow staff. Now I just need to ink the, the top, maybe a few little telescoping lines there. Okay, now to finish off his trench coat, then we move on to Rogue. We'll, we'll fill in all these blacks. I'll just put little X's in these areas that need to be filled in black. It'll be easier to do with a brush pen after I've finished the pencils, or inking over the pencils, and then um, erase the pencils. Then I can fill in the blacks, and it'll be less smudgy or faded. So another way to create depth here is that shadow. We have the, the trench coat overlapping the back of the trench coat, and then that little fade right there now creates that depth of this is in the back, this is in the front. It's kind of a rule of thumb is what is overlapping other stuff. And then dropping in shadows, whether it be big chunky black shapes or fades, can help convey shadow and or depth. I've got the other side of his, his jacket pulling around this way. Doing fades like this kind of gives a sense of motion, movement, and shadow. Just beefing up some lines. You can always make lines thicker as you need to. Just like a barber says, you, they, they can always, they start short cutting your hair with just a little bit. And then you can always go shorter if you want. They can always take off more hair, but they can't put the hair back on. You can always make your thin lines thicker, but it might it's near near impossible to make your thick lines thinner without breaking in bringing in some white out white paint. Definitely want to have thicker lines on this this leg here because it is in the further part of the foreground. Okay, let's move over here to Rogue and see what we can do for her. What energy texture is the most fun for me to draw? Ah, golly, you know, so many are fun for different reasons. I mean, fire is fun, um, lasers are fun, like bright lights can be a lot of fun. Um, just because each texture can be conveyed in its own shape or uh, congestion of line, like... Uh, how closely closely you draw the lines or what the types of shapes you have to draw to con convey like fire, like I did on the Human Torch uh, post-it note from this past week. So we're gonna have a lot of hair here, gang, a lot of hair. 
So it's blowing off to the side, but I want to see a little bit of her ear underneath. It's blowing up just enough to where I can see the bottom half of her ear. Bottom half of that ear. So I was using the double zero five micron, but I'm going to switch to the zero one for just a little thicker nib, broader nib. For some of the stuff we're going to be tackling here. We'll go back to that zero five for the interiors of her face. What style of hair do I like to draw? I like to draw all sorts of styles. Short hair, long hair, stubble hair, um, curly hair, straight hair. It's all fun. It's all fun for me. I love looking at hairstyles and, and, and seeing how to uh, translate them. Women's hair can be some of the most fun because they're, they're, they can do so much with their hair like cascading curls that run down the shoulders. Um, yeah. So me oh, we're back. Sorry about that gang. The internet gagged for some reason. Maybe a neighbor is streaming something or whatnot, but, uh, hopefully we didn't lose too many of you. Um, so yeah, I want to keep in mind uh, where the white is, the white streak, and then I will differentiate that with the dark brown part of her hair with more darker. So I have to be very, very thoughtful and be very mindful, I should say. So now that I've got the white chunk figured out, because it's just one streak down the middle, now I can come in with darker concentrations of lines. But before I do that, let's get that, uh, I want to tackle that, uh, the tail of her, her headband. I think a brush pen, using the zebra brush pen, fine point here, Get a nice texture, textured shape to that, that headband. Get that flow. And how it broadens out to a wider, wider end there. So now I can ink the, the hair without fear of losing the, uh, the headband straps. Now keeping in mind her, some kind of the little neck curly cues, then how it also overlaps the collar, overlaps her shoulders, and then just this free form flowing in the back. There's a little bit of curl. She had a lot of body and wave to her hair back in the early 1990s when she got this look, courtesy of megastar artist Jim Lee. Loved his work on the X-Men. That's why I became a big fan of his work when I was younger. I remember the first time I saw Jim Lee's work was in an issue of classic X-Men. It was a storm story, and it featured uh, a scene with Colossus and Wolverine. And when I saw how he drew Colossus, the moment I saw his Colossus, instant fan. It's like, who is this guy? He is awesome. He draws Colossus really well. And at that time, Colossus was my favorite X-Men. 
So if someone drew Colossus really well, you scored big marks with me when I was a kid. And Jim Lee did that in one panel. Can't remember that issue number of uh, of Classic X Men, but uh, but I know I got it somewhere in my collection. I'll have to look it up. I'd love to see that story again. See how I'm getting the curls there? I kind of go in one direction, then I curve back the other direction. It takes a lot of practice to kind of get that flow down. So you can try giving it a whirl. Let's get her jacket going there. We got that big old collar. Got the shoulder. And she's got her rolled up bomber jacket sleeves here. So I'm just considering these kind of curved, wrinkled, chunky shapes here. And then she, her arm kind of tucks in here behind Gambit's hair. So who are y'all's favorite X-Men? I know a lot of people came in saying that this is their favorite couple, two of their favorite X-Men, and people have asked who my favorite X-Men are. Who are some of your favorite X-Men? I just saw Rogue. Yep, she's in my top five. Wolverine, Cyclops, Iceman. Nice, nice, nice. Dig all those as well. Along with Batman. Fair enough, fair enough. Gambit and Jubilee. Storm. We'll bring Nightcrawler Colossus. Yep, yep. Rogue and Gambit because of the 90s cartoon. Right on. X Men the animated series. The early 90s. X Men 92, as it's often referred to. How did y'all discover the X-Men? Where did you first discover the X-Men? Was it the 90s cartoon? Was it the comic book? I'll, while you're preparing your answer, I'll say I discovered the X-Men on um, the cartoon, the 80s cartoon, Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends. And that led me to reading the comic books because I wanted to learn more about these characters. They did three episodes of Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends that featured the X-Men, and you can find those on Disney+. Plus. Oh, the trading cards, that's interesting. Was it the Jim Lee set of trading cards? Or was it the Marvel Universe trading cards? X-Men Evolution, okay, the cartoon, right on. Sunspot, yes, I love New Mutants. Sunspot is great. Okay, a lot of y'all discovered it from the cartoons. Oh, and the Jim Lee comics, yeah, yeah, X-Men number one. The adjectiveless X-Men series. The X-Men board game, oh, that's cool. That's how you discover the X-Men, from the board game. That's really cool. Had little pewter uh, statuettes for the, the, the game pieces. That's fun. Do you still have that game? The John Byrne made you run made you love the series. Yes, John Byrne is a mega legend. Oh, your dad bought you your first X-Men comics. That's cool. Good dad, good dad. Your grandfather introduced you to the to the cartoon and then the movies. Right on. Good grandfather. Classic X-Men issue 39 was the Jim Lee issue. Thank you, Shane. Hey, Shane, how's it going? Good to see you here, man. Yes, I got to go look up Classic X-Men 39 and uh, reread that story. It'll be interesting to see what Jim Lee's work looked like then since I haven't seen it in so long. Are 
You watch the movies and the TV shows. Yeah, a lot of people, it was, it was amazing how many people discovered X-Men through that, uh, that early 1990s cartoon. That was a really breakout mainstream moment for the X-Men. They had tried to do an X-Men series, or at least they did a pilot episode. It's called Pride of the X-Men. If it's not on any of the streaming services, you could probably, uh, maybe it's been posted on, on YouTube or something. But it was just a one, one episode uh, co uh, cartoon which kind of introduced the X-Men as a potential series. It didn't go to series at that time, but, um, but it was really wonderfully done. I really, I, I remember, I think I still have it on VHS cassette. I think I taped it off the, the TV when it aired because I was so excited for an X-Men cartoon, um, but it never went beyond that, that Pride of the X-Men um, episode, which introduced Kitty Pride to the X-Men. That was the main thing. It was kind of, she, she kind of, uh, Jubilee kind of followed the same, same, uh, introduction as Kitty Pride, cartoon wise. Well, not exactly the same, I guess, because Kitty Pride had Sentinels trying to, to kidnap her, but, uh, but they were both kind of the, the newbie to the team. The kind of, they'd just been introduced to this weird wild world of, of mutants because they just discovered they're a mutant and now they're kind of coming to Xavier's to, to learn and develop their powers, which I guess is the story for every X-Man, is that they are brought to Xavier's or find their way to Xavier's for, for help, which is kind of a fun consistency for so many of those characters. And that, that Pride of the X-Men uh, cartoon one-shot, that pilot episode, had a theme song with lyrics. I will not try to sing you those lyrics, but um, but it was a little a little corny. I think the lyrics didn't really <laughs> help the the cartoon all that much. I think it was better that like with the '92 series, it was just all music, just more of a kind of a a score rather than an actual theme song. But you know, theme song to work for the ninja. Turtle cartoon, so I think the tone of a Ninja Turtle cartoon was a bit different than the tone of an X-Men cartoon. All right, that's a lot of hair, but that's one fun thing about Rogue is drawing all those, all all that hair and getting that that '90s body and wave going. No place to hide, no place to run. The mutant age has begun. That's right. That's how that that song started. X-Men save the day, men coming your way. Magneto's hordes are on the way to pillage, burn, and plunder, but there's one team that will not yield, the team that strikes like thunder. X-Men, save the day. X-Men, X-Men, come in your way. Now, I'm not saying it's the worst song, but, uh, but there are songs that have that were a bit better for, the, for that time. Uh, Bionic 6, Mask, I think Mask was one of the great ones. Transformers, of course, G.I. Joe. G.I. Joe, I guess, had a couple of variations to their song during the course of the series, or at least G.I. Joe the movie had a slightly vari variation to the G.I. Joe song. So those are some really great songs. Thundercats, yeah. Silverhawks, totally. Yeah, I love I love the Mask and Bionic Six songs, especially Mask. Mask had that kind of real rockin' '80s vibe to it. Not hard rocking, just rocking. Someone just heard the X Men song. Did you just look it up? Did you just did you just uh, check it out here on the on the tube? Yeah, it's a little rough. But not the worst, definitely not the worst, and definitely, I mean, it strikes a chord of nostalgia with me, but when I think of some of the other cartoon songs, just kind of, I don't know, I haven't heard this song in a while, so maybe I need to listen to it. Maybe I'm judging the X-Men theme song a little too harshly here. I'm sure Kid Todd remembers it in a different way. Defenders of the Earth had a great opening theme song. I never really watched Defenders of the Earth. That's the Flash Gordon cartoon, right? Which had a... Uh, some other characters, like uh, some magician dude, and 
who else was in that that Flash Gordon cartoon? Flash Gordon and the Defenders of the Earth, right? Was that was that the one? Appreciate y'all hanging out with me here. Hope you're having a good time. The Phantom and Mandrake the Magician. That's it. Mandrake the Magician. Thank you. Could not remember his his name. I knew he was a magician. Could picture him in my head. I just could not think of his name. Pole Position. Yes, Pole Position had an awesome song. Yes, I love the Pole Position song and the animation to that cartoon as well. If y'all haven't heard the Pole Position song, look up Pole Position Saturday Morning Cartoon theme song and, and you can send me a thank you note later. Love the Pole Position song. Full show. It's right up there with Mask for me. Those would probably be my two, two favorite cartoon rockin' jams. Pole Position, for those of you who might not know, was a video game, a, a race car video game from the 1980s. Just kind of a straight, straight up racing game. Um, not a lot of bells and whistles to it. I mean, it was the 80s, so it's pretty much just drive as fast as you can and win the race. But the cartoon, oh, it's great. They just took all sorts of liberties with the cartoon. It's like, oh, we got a race, we got cars? Okay, cars, now let's come up with a whole you know, cast a character's story, and and really the the, the 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 cartoon was actually more interesting than the game. Uh, though the game was fun to play, especially if you were a kid in the 1980s. What other choice did you have? Um, but uh, but the cartoon, yeah, really well done and had a real nice kind of uh, anime sort of flavor to it. Yeah, I think all the cars on. Uh, let's see, someone said it had a. Pole position had a flying Mustang. I think all the cars had a had a hydrofoil uh, kind of flying type mode. And they had these uh, these com computers that were sentient. They were not unlike Knight Rider. You had Rody. Rody was one. And I can't remember Orbots. Yes, Mighty Orbots had a great great theme song too. Absolutely, and great animation as well. SWAT Cats. I don't. I had heard of SWAT Cats, but I did not get the channel that aired SWAT Cats when I was a kid, where I grew up in just outside of Dallas. Did not get that channel. Oh, Turbo Teen. Yeah, yeah. Man, I wish I could remember that other robot's name, computer's name. I should say it was a computer inside the pole position cars. Someone is Googling that right now, I say, thank you. I look forward to seeing your results. Wheels, Rody and Wheels, thank you. Wheels. That's right. Oh, the Godzilla's cartoon theme song. Yep, I remember that. That's why I became a fan of Godzilla as a kid. As a little, little kid. When that cartoon came on. On NBC Saturday morning cartoons. Some beautiful Thundercat uh, Transformer, or beautiful G.I. Joe Thundercat and Ninja Turtle figures coming out soon. I saw the Snake Eyes, the new... Snake Eyes, and it's like, oh my gosh, that is amazing. And then I just saw a picture of uh, Duke, Roadblock, and I think it was Scarlet. And it's like, oh man, I don't, I don't have the space for all these figures. I want them, but I just don't know if I should get them all. I have to keep from buying all the Transformer Masterpiece figures. Still need to get a Prime and a uh, Bumblebee. Just too much good stuff out there. Do I remember Battle of the Planets? Yes, I do. I do remember Battle of the Planets. One of my first and favorite uh, anime. 
even though it was brought over by Hanna-Barbera and they had those unfortunate uh, Hanna-Barbera uh, animations edited in, Seven Zark Seven and the kids playing ping pong stock footage sort of elements they'd used when they had to edit out some of the stuff from the Japanese cartoon, which was really unfortunate. But as a little kid, I had no idea. I couldn't tell the difference until later as I got older and I got copies of all those cartoons of those Battle of the Planet cartoons. I'm like, oh my gosh, yikers, this is a little rough. Uh, we're running low on battery here. This is a long broadcast. We've been going for almost two hours now. Hopefully we have enough to finish off Rogue here. I better focus on the art here. I guess I could unplug my microphone and plug the charger in. Maybe I'll do that right now, just to ensure we have enough juice to get us through this uh, broadcast. Sorry, gang. Just want to make sure this we don't run out of juice and it just abruptly ends. So now we're just going with the, the mic from the actual phone itself. All right, back to it. So at least now we know we won't run out of power. Hopefully there's not too much of a difference in the audio quality of my voice. Again, I appreciate y'all hanging out. And if you're watching this on replay, thanks for hanging with us. I know this is a long one. Pretty much the length of a feature film. But sometimes it's fun to do one of these long form videos just kind of walk you through my entire process of line art. Hopefully y'all have fun see watching these kind of videos. Let me know in the comment section below if you're watching this on replay. Um, feel free to weigh in as well. Did I see someone say that this video has been in their... <laughs> They're having it on in the background while they clean. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for, for hanging with me while you clean. Nothing wrong with that. Good for you for keeping the house neat and orderly. Will Gambit get his five o'clock shadow? That is a great question. That is a great question. I'm not sure yet. Get that other part of Rogue's belt. The inner part of her jacket, right back there. You're chopping wood? You're chopping wood while this is on it. I, I assume you have the your, your, your device, assuming phone out there with you. That's pretty cool. Please be careful with whatever implement you're using to chop wood. I'm assuming some sort of ax. Please stay safe. So I don't have much more to do here. Yeah, 
And don't forget my uh, post-it note art videos this week, 9 a.m. every weekday morning, 9 a.m. Pacific. So uh, that would be 12 noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central. And if you're international, it would be 4 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time. So that helps you calculate where, what time I'll be in in your part of the country. Should be able to uh, figure figure that out. And if you're subscribed to my channel and your your account is set to notify you when I schedule a a live stream, then you'll receive you should receive an email notification or however you choose to receive your notifications. Um, that will help you know when I'm broadcasting or live streaming as well. those ridges inside of her collar there. You like the way I draw the torso. It's something you normally struggle with. Well, thank you. Thank you. You know, it's definitely been study and practice and just continual work at it. I didn't draw my torsos like this when I was younger. I, I have had a lot to learn, as every artist does. So keep at it. I believe you can get there. Nice Rogan Gambit, thank you so much, appreciate that. Have I ever inked myself on a book? Yes, I have. I've been inking my own work since 2010. So if you've seen any of my work the past 10 years in comic books, you'll see that I was the inker of that. So I've been inking since my Nightcrawler series, much of my Spider-Man stuff. Um, since 2010 or so. Um, not all of my Spider-Man stuff. I've worked with some great inkers while on Spider-Man. Uh, uh, Robert Campanella, Victor Olazaba. He and I, Victor Olazaba, who inks um, Umberto Ramos. Victor and I did the uh, Clone Saga, the real Clone Saga miniseries together. Uh, it was really great working with him. Uh, Campanella inked my um, Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man arc, which was pre-2010, and um, who was it? Uh, Mark Pennington inked a Spectacular Spider-Man 1000 special I, I penciled um, because that was a tight deadline, but pretty much everything else, Nightcrawler, Sleepwalker, Spidey School's Out, uh, Spidey, Spider-Man Homecoming Prelude, Gwen Stacy, present day, and all my covers, uh, I did the inks for those. And uh, it's a lot of fun. It's really fun to to do the inks. It's a lot of work, but a lot of fun.
Let's see, do I have my own comics that are mine? Like something I've created, like my own characters that I've created? Um, I'm assuming that's what you're asking. And uh, the answer is yes. Yes, I do. Um, I have a concept of, uh, it's called Wild Guard. It's something I created back in the early 1990s when I was in school. Um, they're a reality TV superhero team. And this was back when I created them back back then. You know, we didn't have American Idol. We didn't have Survivor or any of the reality TV shows from the past 20 years. Back then, it was inspired by the rea- one of the few reality TV shows we had on at the time. It was a show called Cops. So I imagine what would it be like if cameras followed superheroes instead of uh, police officers, and so that that was what where Wild Guard was born, and uh, I did some homemade mini comics while in school, art school, um, and then in the early two thousands, after I ended my run on the Young Justice series, the original Young Justice series, uh, I decided that that would be a good time to try my creator owned. Uh, concept because at that time, uh, reality TV had had its huge boom with Survivor and American Idol and the such. So I thought this would be a great time to give Wild Guard a go. So I did twelve issues of that series, um, and a series of sh- of uh, mini series or one shots. Um, Wild Guard casting call the origin storyline is a six issue mini series that is collected in trade paperback. So you should be able to find that on like Amazon, and um, yeah, it's called Wild Guard. W I L D G U A R D. That's my creator own concept, and I also do a, a a digital comic strip called Jacko Mantern, which you can find at Jacko underscore Mantern on on Instagram, and it's about a pumpkin headed ghoul. More of a comedic take. Okay, let's see. Let's tackle uh, Rogue's face here. We gotta get these details. Oh, and I also have to finish her headband too. Those will be filled in black in a little bit here. Guy has the dog ears with the red mask. Ah, oh, that's Red Rover. My character, Red Rover. One of the very, very first characters I created for Wild Guard back in the 1990s. And the Space Go Girl, her name was Astro Girl. Yes. Will I be coloring this piece? Yes. Uh, not in this uh, live stream, but in a separate live stream. Pro- hopefully next weekend. If all goes well. Yeah, this live stream is just solely the line art. Using the double zero five here for these fine details. I want to keep things crisp and clean as much as possible. Make sure I've got those irises where I want them to be.
A little shadow here underneath her chin. Okay, we had talked about possible some uh, five o'clock shadow here on Gambit. I think that's a good idea. So I'm gonna start to rough that in. Now I want the, the these lines to travel around the shape of his face. It's not just lines, little dash lines put down anywhere. They need to conform to the direction of his face to create a believable five o'clock shadow. So it, I'm considering the shape of the chin, the area around his mouth, down his jawline. This will help convey the, the shape of his face. See the, these little hash lines radiate from the chin. And we can arc it up onto his upper lip area. And then along the jawline there. If you just put them in random directions, it won't look right. It won't look believable. Even though this is a fantasy character, this is a very stylized style that I have. I still want to try to maintain an air of believability. <sighs> Excuse me. Thanks for being a powerhouse during this time with your live streams. Hey, my pleasure. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you to everyone for watching, whether you're watching here live, if you're watching on replay, I appreciate everyone watching. Thank you so, so much. It means a lot for you to come join me and spend your time with me uh, on, on my channel here. So thank you so much as well. Let's uh, put a little more Go pull the camera back here and do a little more uh, detail here on the uh, ledge that Gambit is standing on. Just a little bit. So I'm just going to create some ridges. whatever building this is he's on top of. So trying to create a kind of a brick and mortar sort of feel. Not a Rick and Morty, a brick and mortar. Some thicker lines to convey a sense of shadow. As the ledge overlaps. Just like that. Now let's bring in the um, eraser here. And uh, I'm going to use my Statler Mars plastic eraser. Just gently try to erase all this graphite. It's fun to see how the kind of the art kind of comes to life when all the structure lines, the construction lines, the foundational lines kind of disappear. It just becomes the sole black and white line art. None of that gray graphite in the mix anymore. I 
I still have to fill in the blacks on some parts of uh, Gambit's costume and on uh, Rogue's headband, but I like to erase first. Stand a less better chance, stand a better chance of not smearing or smudging or causing the, the, the black area to fade, or even sometimes tear the paper depending on the, the uh, type of ink used, which I've seen happen with like the Pentel Pocket Brush Pen. Love how it works, but if I erase over a big chunk of black that I filled in, for some reason it tears the paper. And I don't like that at all. All right, so let's get that said Pentel Pocket Brush Pen. And we can just go in here. Oops, see a little more area I need to erase. Okay. Just gently put those chunky black areas in there. So yes, they'll have some graphite there in Gambit's hair. Pull that out. This foot here. Okay, so I think that's got all the black areas I need to fill in. We do a little few touch ups here on. Rogue's costume, just to get a little more solid black in some of those areas. Cool. And then I see saw a few areas I wanted to just beef up the line, a little thicker of a line. Oh, let's see one part of Rogue's costume I missed. That arm there, wanted that a little thicker. Gambit's hair here. Just a little more pop away from Rogue behind him. A little bit more on this knee there. And on this thigh as well. Let's see, we have some spots here we needed to take care of. I'm just gonna use my zebra brush pen for a little more control here for this narrow, these narrow straps that run at the top and bottom of her knee. There we go. one more area here I could stand to beef up. A little part of his knee right there gives him a little more, a little more pop. Okay, so I'm gonna just add my 
name on here, right inside of the, the uh, this ledge here. Had my cover signature. Same one I use for my post-it notes. And today is 29th, March, 2020. Oh, there we go, gang. Sorry about that. The internet gag there for just another second. Just want to add a few more little details. Okay, let me uh, flip the camera around here and we can sign off for this broadcast. So let me uh, flip that. Hey there, gang. Got the microphone plugged back in. Let me plug the camera back into the rig here. There we go. Awesome. Gang, this was a long video. What we got? 145 minutes. What is that? Uh, just over two hours? Dang, that's... Thanks for sticking with me. This was a lot of fun to do, and this is just step one. Uh, the next uh, time I get a chance to do a live stream like this will be to do all the colors. We'll color Rogue and Gambit and the building he's on at the very least. So uh, thanks so much. I'll have a shot of this up on my social media. So swing by, check out my Instagram, my Twitter. I'm at Todd Knock on both of those. And I should have this up on the Art of Todd Knock Facebook page as well. So you can uh, find me there. And if you're watching this on replay, hopefully I have all those links added to the video description below by this time. So gang, thank you so much for hanging out. Please stay safe during this coronavirus um, season. Please continue to wash your hands. Please don't put yourself in dangerous situations where you could get infected. Please be cautious. Please be careful. We want this to run its course as soon as possible so we can get back to normal as soon as possible. I know it's a really stressful time out there for everyone. So keep the faith. Stay strong. Lean on your family and friends. You don't have to go through this alone because none of us are going through this alone. And uh, keep joining me here for some uh, live art streams. Tomorrow we'll be drawing on a post-it note. Not sure which character yet, but uh, I'll be here tomorrow, 9 a.m. Pacific Time, 12 noon uh, Eastern Time, 11 a.m. Central Time, Mountain, check your local listings, and uh, if you're international, it would be 4 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, so however you calculate from there. Um, and yeah, and also, like I said, if you're subscribed to my channel and you have your notification, let's try that again, take two. If you're subscribed to my channel and uh, your notifications are set to alert you when I schedule a live stream, then you'll get a notification and you'll be sure to not miss out. If you saw this, if you watched this video, either live or in replay, please leave me a thumbs up if you liked what you saw. And also feel free to leave a comment in the section below. Thanks for all the comments and posts during the, and questions during this live stream. Sorry I couldn't answer everybody's or address everybody's, but I do appreciate you participating with me. It means a lot. It's so good to hang out with y'all. Uh, y'all are the best. Thank you so much. I'm Todd Knock. You keep on drawing and keep having fun. Take care, everybody. See you soon. Bye-bye.